Everybody has seen a computer. In fact, we use computers every day. But how do they work? Every computer follows a simple series of events that helps make them useful. This starts with an input. An input is any information that goes into a computer. This might be the press of a key, a click of a button, video from a camera, or even the temperature of a thermometer. Devices that provide information to a computer are called input devices. Once the computer has received this input, it spends a tiny fraction of a second calculating what this information means and how it will need to respond. This is called processing and is done in the computer system central processing unit, or CPU. As soon as it finishes working this out, the computer often lets us know by producing an output. An output is a way for the computer to communicate with the outside world. This can include sounds, pictures on a screen, or even movement of a robotic part. Devices that a computer system used to communicate are called output devices. You might be thinking, okay, that seems pretty reasonable, but how does a computer know what to do? This is where programming comes into play. All computers use a special set of instructions called programs to help them decide what to do. These can be very simple, like in a calculator, or very complex, like in a supercomputer. And without them, your computer is little more than a brick. The final part of the puzzle is storage. Storage is used to keep information for later use. Sometimes data must be saved to storage, and at other times it needs to be retrieved from storage. Devices that hold information are called storage devices. In essence, this is how a computer works. But let's look at some examples. Let's say you're video calling a friend. The input to your laptop is the video and audio going through the webcam. The computer then processes the video and audio, breaking it into parts to send to your friend. When it reaches your friend's computer, it's output onto their screen as video and through their speakers as audio. But wait, where did all these special effects come from? When making the call, you decided to play with the video calling program and add some filters to your video. This means a bit more work for the processor, but it's a lot more fun. The images for the filters are kept on your computer's storage and are opened as you add them to the stream. As another example, let's look at a calculator. Let's say you press the 2 button on your calculator. This is the input. The calculator spends a fraction of a second processing what it needs to do, then displays the number 2 on its screen as an output. If this seems a little complicated, you can think of it like this. Input is how a computer gets information from the world, allowing us to communicate with the computer. Processing is the computer calculating what it should do next. Output is the way the computer can communicate with the outside world, including us. Programming is the instructions given to a computer, so it knows how to process information. And storage is how a computer keeps information for later use. See if you can think of some examples of input, processing, and output.